Hi, welcome to Organic Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about the homologous series of hydrocarbons, specifically looking at the homologous series of hydrocarbons, which involves alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So what is a hydrocarbon? This is a compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen. The overwhelming variety of organic compounds can be simplified by classifying them into groups called the homologous series. The members of these series have related structures and properties. In other words, they're similar to one another. A homologous series of compounds is a group of related compounds in which each member differs from the one before it by the same additional unit. So in this case, what we're going to be looking at is the adding of additional carbons. You have two reference tables that you're going to be using extensively in organic chemistry. The first is table Q, and this is our table for the homologous series of hydrocarbons. So it gives you the name, the general formula, the name of the compound that they're using as an example, and the structural formula for the example. So for an alkane, we'll see it has a general formula of CnH2n plus 2, where that n represents the number of carbon atoms. So ethane, which has an A-N-E ending, that's how we're going to recognize these, has all single bonds between the carbons. Alkenes has the general formula of CnH2n, so ethene, we know eth means two carbons, but this E-N-E -E ending tells me I'm going to have a double bond between the two carbons. And finally, alkynes, which has a general formula of CnH2n minus 2. We're going to be looking for that Y-N-E -E ending to indicate a triple bond between the two carbons. Table P is also extremely helpful. This gives you the prefixes that are associated with number of carbon atoms. So methyl B1, ethyl B2, prop is 3, bute is 4, pent 5, hex 6, hept is 7, oct is 8, non is 9, and dec is 10. And we're not going to really go past 10 because that would be evil and I would have to be destroyed. So you're going to say to yourself, well, I've seen these already. And really, for pent through deci, you have. You have seen those before because we use those with binary molecular compounds and how we name them. The key thing here that you need to be familiar with is these first four, meth, eth, prop, and but. So this is the starting point of naming our basic organic compounds. So let's start with alkanes. Alkanes are saturated, open-chained hydrocarbon. So saturated meaning all single bonds, open chain meaning no rings, and then a hydrocarbon meaning only hydrogen and carbon are involved. So a homologous series of saturated hydrocarbons that release energy when burned. As the number of carbons increase in the alkane series, the boiling point increases. And we're going to see this specific point when we get more into solutions. The general formula here is CnH2n plus 2, as we saw on that reference table. And we're going to look at a number of ex different examples, specifically methane, ethane, propane, butane, and pentane. So you want to make sure that you have your notes out and that you're copying these down so you have these as a reference. So let's start with methane. The chemical formula for methane is CH4. Now you've seen this before when we drew nonpolar molecules and looked at uh, molecular polarity and bond polarity, we drew out carbon and we know carbon has four bonds. So now we're putting a name to this. So it has one carbon, so that's meth. It is not bound to any other carbons, so it's A-N-E, so this would be methane. So now let's do ethane. The chemical formula for ethane is C2H6. So eth meaning two carbons, so one, two, A-N-E, meaning a single bond between the two carbons, right there. We know that each carbon can have four bonds in order to have its full octet. And because this is composed only of carbons and hydrogens, that means everything else around these carbons must be a hydrogen. Let's go on to propane. So propane. So prop means three. So C3 
h, and then we know it's 2 times 3 plus 2, so this is going to be 8. So 3 carbons, 1, 2, 3, a and e ending, single bonds between the three of them. And then we have our hydrogens that will surround all of this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So there's propane. Now let's do butane. But means 4, so we're going to have C, 4, H. So we want 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 2 more, which is 10. So we're going to have 4 carbons surrounded by 10 hydrogens. Finally, let's look at pentane. Pent means 5, so C, 5, H, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So we are going to draw 5 carbons, all with single bonds, hooking them together, and then surrounded by hydrogens. So there you have it, the alkanes, where you have carbons with single bonds between them, surrounded by hydrogens. Now let's talk about the alkenes. These are unsaturated, which we know if it's classified as unsaturated, that means it has to have a double or triple bond. Hydrocarbons, so again, we're only dealing with hydrogen and carbon, with one carbon to carbon double bond. So that E-N-E -N -E ending says, hey, you have a double bond somewhere. The general formula here is C-N-H-2-N. So the key thing here to remember is that you can't have a methene because meth means one, and we need to have at least two carbons to form this double bond between them, which is why we are starting with ethene. We know that eth means two carbons, so one, two. That E-N-E -E ending tells us we have a double bond, double bond right here. Now, each carbon can form four bonds. They already have two, which means I'm going to have a bond here, here. It doesn't really matter if the bonds go um, out to the side or down or up. You just want to make sure that you have four bonds coming off of each carbon. So at this point, at this stage with regions chemistry, as long as you have the correct number of bonds, I'm not too worried about orientation. If you go on to organic chemistry in college or chemistry in college in general, then they can get more specific. So when I look at this, this is ethene, two carbons, so C, two, and then H, four. So I should have four hydrogens here, which I do. Let's look at propene. Now before we start drawing it, we really should figure out the molecular formula. So prop means three, so C, three. That E-N-E -E ending means we have six hydrogens. So when I draw this, I'm going to have three carbons and six hydrogens involved. Between one of these carbons, I have to put a double bond. At this point, we're not going to focus on how we name where that double bond is, that's going to come later. So right now, I'm just gonna put the double bond here and I'm going to put a single bond between the other two carbons. Could I have it reversed? Of course I could. Now, when you're doing the hydrogens around here, you have to pay really close attention. This first carbon has two bonds, so three, four, that one's set and we'll add hydrogens to those. That middle carbon already has three bonds attached to it, which means I can only have one more. So we'll put a hydrogen here. And finally, that last carbon has one bond, so it needs three more bonds. So hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen right there. And again, if we count up our carbons, we have three carbons, and then I count up my hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm all good. Let's go on to butene. The molecular formula for butene would be C4H8. So I'm going to put down four carbons. One, two, three, four. Again, I'm more interested in the structure, so I'm not going to worry about where you put the double bond right now. We'll get to that later. So for giggles, I'm going to put the double bond right here single bonds between the rest of them. I'm not in this course gonna give you a molecule with two double bonds in it. If you're in an advanced chemistry course at a different school, that might come up, but in my course, for my class, we're only going to have one double bond. 
every other carbon now, I have to make sure it has its four bonds. And then I'm going to fill in my hydrogens. The key thing here is to make sure that every carbon only has four bonds. Not five, not three, but four. Let's look at our last example of pentene. Pent means five. C5, and then if we look at that formula, it's H2N, so H10. I'm going to put down five carbons. Between one of those carbons, I'm going to put a double bond. Then I'm going to add in my hydrogens to make sure that each carbon only has four bonds. Then I'm going to add in my hydrogens. As the molecules get bigger, I want to double check to make sure I have the right number of hydrogens. So if I go through and count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is definitely C5H10 and a representation of one type of pentene. Our last group is called the alkynes. These are hydrocarbons, so again, only carbon and hydrogen, that have one carbon to carbon triple bond. The general formula here is CnH2n minus 2. We can't have methine again because we need to have a triple bond between two carbons. So we're going to start with ethine. Eth means 2, so C2. And then with the H, it's going to be 2n minus 2. So in this case, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 2 is 2. So this is going to be H2. So I'm going to start out with my two carbons, 1, 2. There's going to be one triple bond between those two carbons, which is really the only place where I can put it. So a triple bond. Each carbon has to have four bonds. So 1, 1. Now, each one has four bonds. I have two hydrogens. I'm going to put a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here, and it looks really symmetrical. So I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Let's go on to propine. Prop means three. So C3H, two times three is six, minus two is four. Now this one always gets me. This one always looks so very bizarre because it doesn't seem like we're going to have enough hydrogens. So let's draw this out. One, two, three carbons. Pick a spot for your triple bond. I'm going to put mine right here. You could put it between the other two carbons if you wanted to. There will be a single bond between these two carbons. And then again, I'm going to fill in my bonds to make sure that each carbon has four bonds. So this carbon over on the left, it needs one more. This carbon in the middle has its four bonds, so I don't need to do anything to it. And then this carbon on the end, one, two, three. So if I fill in my hydrogens, one, two, three, four. It's like magic. I have my four hydrogens. I have just created propine. Let's go on to butyne. But means four. So C, four, H. So now this is two times four, which is eight, minus two, which is six. So six hydrogens will be involved in this. So let's start out with our four carbons. One, two, three, four triple bond between one of the sets of carbons. So one, two, three, a single bond here, a single bond here. Now I need to look at each carbon and make sure it has its four bonds. So this one on the far left, one, two, three, this carbon, this next carbon has its four bonds. It doesn't need anything. The next carbon has its four bonds. No more needed. And finally, this carbon on the end, one, two, three. Then I'm going to fill in my hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six. So C four H six. Could the triple bond be somewhere else? Yes. And when we get to naming these more in the future, we'll figure out how to identify where that triple bond is properly located. Let's do one more. Pentine. Pent means five. C five H. 5 times 5 is 10, minus 2 is 8. So let's put down our five carbons, put a triple bond between two of the carbons, fill the rest of the carbons with single bonds, 
add enough bonds around to make sure that each carbon has its four bonds. Then add your hydrogens in to make sure that you have the proper number of bonds. In this case, we should be using eight hydrogens. And we did. So this is an example of how you would write alkynes. So what did you learn? We talked about the homologous series of hydrocarbons. We looked at alkanes, alkenes, and finally some examples of alkynes. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.